You might be surprised how much difference Gradle can make compared to Maven in terms of developer productivity. To show you how, here are the top five benefits of using Gradle with a full comparison with Maven. Let's get right into it. Gradle is faster, a lot faster. This is a massive productivity boost to developers building projects many times each day. Let's be specific about what faster means by comparing Maven and Gradle's performance in a real project. This small Java project has 10 submodules, each with 50 main classes and 50 test classes, 1,000 classes in total. The build process required for this project is simple. Just compile the code and run the tests. It's already set up with both Maven's pom.xml build files and Gradle's build.gradle build scripts. Let's run the Maven build with Maven package. It compiles the code and runs the tests. I'll run it three more times, which are faster since Maven can reuse some of the previously generated outputs. I'll take the average of these three builds, which gives 17 seconds. Note that I'm not cleaning the project or making any changes between builds. Moving on to Gradle, we'll run Gradle W build. It compiles the code and runs the tests. I'll run it three more times, which gives an average of one second. That's quite a difference. So what's happening here to make Gradle faster? Well, Gradle took a lot of inspiration from Maven, but along the way made some important optimizations. The biggest is incremental build, which in a nutshell means Gradle doesn't do the same task again if nothing has changed. FYI, a Gradle task is the equivalent of a Maven goal, just a unit of work to get executed in the build. Incremental build works for compilation, test execution, or any other task that happens in your build. Gradle keeps track of each task's inputs and outputs. Only when these change does the task get rerun. Maven doesn't have anything so advanced. It attempts not to recompile unchanged code, but it still runs all tests again on every build, even when nothing's changed. There's also the Gradle daemon, which constantly runs Gradle in the background ready to execute a build. This improves build time by over five seconds. Maven doesn't have such a feature. To compare Maven and Gradle's performance fully, you'll want to consider other scenarios, like what happens when you make a minor code change then rebuild, or what happens when building a large single project monolith. Gradle have published an article with performance results for all these scenarios. It says Gradle is at least twice as fast in every scenario and sometimes up to 85 times faster. Gradle's performance advantages over Maven mean less time waiting for your build and more time doing important work. Next up, defining how to build your project in Gradle is much more concise than Maven. To show you how, I've taken this simple single module Java project and created Maven pom.xml and Gradle build.gradle files. They both do the same thing of compiling and testing the project. Maven's XML build file comes in at 66 lines, whereas Gradle's groovy build script is only 36 lines, so about half the size. Maven is just a lot more wordy than Gradle. There's no other reason for this other than, well, XML. <coughs> Gradle chose a code-based build script. This means you configure a build by calling methods using the groovy language rather than using XML tags but the groovy language has been used in a way that makes the build script look more like a definition than a script. While different people find different file formats easier to read, such a dramatic size difference has some clear benefits. It helps readability, so you can scan through a build file and get to the point faster. In Gradle, I can see all the dependencies at once without scrolling through pages of XML. It helps maintainability, since to make changes, you'll need to modify less code. To add a new dependency in Gradle is a one rather than four line pull request. I don't mean to come across as unnecessarily bashing XML, but actually yes I do, because more concise build scripts means less time trying to understand your build and more time doing important work. And as you'll see soon, using code to define your build has some other fairly significant advantages. Gradle is easier to customize than Maven. The only way to add custom build logic in Maven is to use an existing plugin or create your own. Recently, I wanted to print out the dependency count in a Maven project, and I had to A, create a new Maven plugin project, 
B, write the code to calculate and print out the dependency count, which actually I was pretty happy with, then C, run Maven install against the new plugin project, then D, add the plugin to the pom.xml of the project I wanted to use it in. In Gradle, I just add a single task to the build script. The code-based nature of build.gradle lets us add functionality more dynamically than Maven. And yes, I know with great power comes great responsibility. You could easily overuse this privilege and end up with custom build logic all over the place. But we're conscientious developers, right? Well, I try to be. But don't worry, because as you'll see in the next point, Gradle has many options to move build logic out of the build script for maintainability and reuse. Back to the easy customization point though. One important difference with Gradle is it has a more dynamic model to represent your build. You can change this model on the fly using the Gradle APIs directly in your build script. For example, part of the model is called the task graph, representing all the tasks to be executed and their relationship to each other. This count dependencies task can be hooked into whatever point I need to run it in the build, like when the main code is compiled. You can even configure the task to only execute under certain conditions, for example, only if we're building in a CI environment, or only if you've hit the like button. Seriously though, if you're enjoying this video, I'd really appreciate a like to help spread the video to more people. Thanks a lot. The final point to make, which you probably already realized, is that anything you can do in the groovy language, you can also do in your build script. While you or your team might want to place limits on that, it can be immensely useful for transforming strings or even adding log statements to help debug issues. Since Gradle is more customizable than Maven, that means less time working on your build, more time doing important work. Gradle encourages you to treat your build code like you would production code, or in other words, keep it dry. <clears throat> code reuse in Gradle happens on three different levels, the build script, the project, and cross project. Which level you choose depends on the amount of reuse you require. In Maven, there's only one level of reuse, cross-project, which is when you create a Maven plugin. While this is sometimes helpful, we don't always want the overhead of maintaining a separate project, especially when the build logic applies to one project only. In Gradle, the first level of reuse is within the build script, where we can define custom methods and classes. For example, we can define a class for a task which prints out a greeting for a specific person. We can then register multiple tasks within our build, referencing this class. But what if we wanted to use this task in multiple subprojects? In Gradle, we can extract the class into a special project directory called build source. This is the second level of reuse. Any code you put in build source is available in the build.gradle file of other subprojects. The third level of reuse is extracting our task into its own project to be published and reused by multiple separate projects. We could even take it a step further and turn it into a plugin, which, much like with Maven, you can easily apply to any project to add certain behavior. There's a lot to unpack here, but if you're interested to learn more, there's a whole chapter devoted to organizing Gradle projects effectively in my extremely helpful Gradle Hero course. Hint, hint. So being able to reuse build code more easily in Gradle not only gives us dev brownie points, but also means less time working on your build, more time doing important work. Using Gradle gives the developer an improved experience over Maven when it comes to the grind of the day-to-day -day work. On top of what we've already discussed, there are some neat features incorporated into the Gradle command line. For example, you can use abbreviated task names, shortening build to B, assemble to A, or boot jar main class name to B, J, M, C, N. Just give enough of the task name so that it's unique. With Gradle, the console output is a lot more succinct than Maven's. The default behavior gives you a real-time view of what's currently running, easier to digest than pages of log output flying past. Once completed, in the case of build success, we get a single message, or for failure, more detailed output. To debug build issues, Gradle can generate a dependency tree just like Maven. Unlike Maven though, with Gradle you can debug the build script itself straight from the IDE. But perhaps most useful is the build scan you can generate by passing the dash dash scan option. This browser-based report contains a build summary, a detailed account of your build's performance, a full dependency report, and much more. 
Now this last point was a bit cheeky as the build scan is something you can generate from a Maven build as well by adding an extension built by Gradle. Once included, Maven will generate a similar report. Very useful for debugging builds or even migrating projects from Maven to Gradle. Just saying. Although we've only touched the surface here, hopefully you can see that these features improve the developer experience. That means less time working on your build, more time doing important work. The benefits of Gradle I've just highlighted can be a game changer for a project. But I'm interested to know what you think, so let me know in the comments down below which of these benefits could convince you to migrate from Maven to Gradle. And if none of them would, I'd love to know why. And if you want to continue learning about Gradle, then check out this Gradle tutorial for complete beginners. It's right here. This is Tom, signing off.